Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using flexibility matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span BC and span CD. Also, there are two overhanging spans. On the left side, we have a overhanging span AB. On the right side, we have a overhanging span DE. So, we have overhanging on both of the sides. In the overhanging AB, we have a point load 30 kN in the point A. In the span BC, there is a point load 20 kN acting in the center. In the span CD, there is UDL 12 kN per meter acting for the full span. In the overhanging span DE, we have UDL 12 kN per meter. In this beam, we can easily calculate the moment in the point B because there is overhanging on the left of B. To calculate MB, we have to find the moment in the point B from the point A. In the overhanging, there is only one load 30 kN acting in the point A. The distance of overhanging is 2 meter. When we multiply the load 30 with the distance, we will get MB. In this way, we are getting MB which is equal to minus 60 kN meter. We have to be very careful. When we find the moment in this way, we have to always add a negative sign with the load. You can see that I have applied the load with the negative sign so that we will get a negative moment. We can also calculate MD because after the point D there is overhanging. To calculate MD we have to find the moment due to the UDL. This UDL is acting for the full distance in the overhanging. The distance is 3 meter. When we multiply the UDL with the distance and distance upon 2, we will get MD. Here also, we should not forget that we have to add a negative sign with the load so that we will get a negative moment. Since we have calculated the moments from the point B and D, no need to consider the overhanging spans anymore. Let us take the spans BC and CD and calculate MC in the point C. In the spans BC and CD, the number of unknown reactions and moments are 3. They are RB, RC and RD. The available equilibrium equations are 2. They are sigma m is equal to 0 and sigma v is equal to 0. So the degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 3 minus 2. We will get 1. Let us release mc. When we release mc from the point c, this continuous beam becomes two different simply supported beams. This is called the release to structure. We have made the release to structure. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there is only one coordinate. The coordinate is in the point C because in the point C we have removed MC. We know the formula to calculate the final moment MC. P matrix is equal to delta matrix inverse into delta matrix minus delta L matrix. Inside these matrices, we will have only one value because in this analysis, there is only one coordinate. In this formula, first let us calculate delta L matrix. 
we know that delta L matrix is the displacements in the coordinate direction. In this analysis, we have removed the movement from the point C. So, here the displacement is the slope in the point C. To calculate the slope in the point C, let us make the conjugate beams. Using the loads, we can make the conjugate beams. In the beam BC, there is a point load 20 kN acting in the center. If in the simply supported beam, point load is acting in the center, the formula to calculate the maximum bending moment is WL upon 4. Here W is 20, L is 4. When we apply the values, we are getting 20. If in the simply supported beam, UDL is acting for the full span, the formula for the maximum bending moment is WL square upon 8. Here W is 12, L is 4. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 24. Using these values, we can make the conjugate beams. We know that in the conjugate beams, we have to divide the moment by EI. Let us name the conjugate beams as B dash C dash and C dash D dash. Now let us find delta L. For that we have to find the slope in the point C. In the conjugate beams, the slope is the shear force in the point C dash. In the point C dash, to calculate the shear force, we have to find RC dash. Because there is no other load, only there is RC dash. RC dash should be calculated in both of the beams. First in the beam B dash C dash, then in the beam C dash D dash. Now let us calculate RC dash in the beam B dash C dash. This is a symmetrical loading, so we can easily calculate RC dash. For that, we have to divide the total load by 2. In this loading, the total load is the area. This is a triangle. We know the formula for the area of the triangle, half into breadth into height. The area divided by 2, we will get RC dash. Now, let us calculate RC dash. In the beam C dash D dash, this is also symmetrical loading. For this parabola, the area formula is 2 upon 3 into breadth into height. The area divided by 2, we are getting RC dash. For delta L, we have to add both of these values. After adding, we are getting 52 upon EI. So, we have calculated delta L matrix. Inside the delta L matrix, there will be only one value because in this analysis, there is only one coordinate. In this formula, now let us find the delta matrix. Delta matrix is the final displacements. In this analysis, we have calculated two final movements. MB and MD. We have to calculate the slope in the point C due to these final movements. In the released structure, let us apply the value of MB in the point B and the value of MD in the point D. When we apply the value of MD in the point D, here the movement will be 54 and here it will be 0. Using that we can make this diagram. When we apply MB in the point B, here the movement will be 60 and here it will be 0. Using that we can make this diagram. We know that we have to divide the movements by EI in the conjugate beams. Now let us calculate delta. For that we have to calculate RC dash. 
Let us see the formula to calculate RC dash. In this kind of triangular loading, for the maximum loading side, the reaction formula is WL upon 3 and for the minimum loading side, the reaction formula is WL upon 6. Here we have to calculate RC dash. In the minimum loading side, the formula is WL upon 6. First, let us take the beam B dash C dash. Here W is 60 upon EI, L is 4. When we apply the values in the formula, we are getting 40 upon EI. Now let us calculate RC dash in the beam C dash D dash. Here also we have to apply the same formula WL upon 6. Here W is 54 upon EI, L is 4. After applying the values in the formula, we are getting 36 upon EI. For delta, we have to add both of these values. After adding, we are getting 76 upon EI. Finally, we have made the delta matrix. In this formula, now let us calculate the flexibility matrix. For that, we have to apply unit movement in the coordinate. Our coordinate is in the point C. So, in the point C, we have to apply unit movement. When we apply unit movement in the point C, in the point C, the movement will be 1 and in the point B and D, it will be 0. Using that, we can make these two diagrams. Now, let us calculate delta. For that, we have to find RC dash. We have already seen the formulas. For the maximum side, the formula for the reaction is WL upon 3. Using the formula, let us calculate RC dash in the beam B dash C dash. Here, W is 1 upon EI, L is 4. Finally, for RC dash, we are getting 4 upon 3 EI. Now, let us take the beam C dash D dash. Here, W is 1 upon EI, L is 4. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 4 upon 3 EI. Since we are having the same length, we are having the same values. For delta, let us add both of these values. After adding, we are getting 8 upon 3 EI. In this formula, we have calculated everything. Let us apply the values. Let us add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this. 8 upon 3 EI inverse is equal to 3 EI upon 8. Then we can eliminate this EI and this EI. 3 eights are 24. 3 into 3, we will get 9. So, in this analysis, we have calculated all of the final movements. Now, we are going to calculate the vertical reactions. First, let us take the overhanging span AB and the span BC together and calculate the vertical reactions. When we take them together, no need to consider MB because it will get eliminated. Only we have to consider MC which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. In these spans, first I am going to calculate RB. For that I am going to take moment about C. In this case I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The point load 30 kN is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative and the distance is 6 meter, so minus 30 into 6. RB is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is 4, so 4 RB. The point load 20 kN is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative 
and the distance is 2 meter so 20 into 2 finally there is a moment which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so it will be negative after the calculations we are getting rb which is equal to 57.25 kN now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and calculate rc1 for rc1 we will get a negative value that means our assumption is wrong we assumed that rc1 is acting upwards but actually it is acting downwards now let us take the spans cd and the overhanging span de together and calculate the vertical reactions when we take them together no need to consider md because it will get eliminated so in this case we have to consider only mb which is acting in the clockwise direction in these spans first i am going to calculate rc2 for that i am going to take moment about d rc2 is acting towards the point d in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter so for rc2 then we have to take the udl we have to split the udl into two parts first in the span cd then in the overhanging de in the span cd it is acting towards the point d in the anti-clockwise direction so it will be negative when the UDL comes, we have to multiply the load with the distance and distance upon 2. Now, let us take the UDL in the overhanging DE. It is acting towards the point D in the clockwise direction. So, it will be positive and the distance is 3. So, 12 into 3 into 3 upon 2. Then, we have a moment which is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive finally we are getting rc2 which is equal to 8.25 kN then let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 using the rule let us calculate rd which is equal to 75.75 kN now let us add rc1 and rc2 after adding we are getting rc now i am going to calculate the shear force values i am going to start from the point a and move towards the point e in this case i am moving towards right hand side upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative using that we can calculate the shear force values using the values we can make the shear force diagram now let us make the free moment diagram now let us make the end moment diagram now let us combine the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram so that we are getting the bending moment diagram now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video